Hope everyone's having a wonderful day. Today we're starting off on this 2015 Chevy uh, Duramax LML. And unfortunately, I lost all the audio to the video for some crazy reason. So I'm gonna be doing a voiceover on it. Now, this truck actually came in, it had a really bad tick. Um, so what I ended up finding is that front injector number two, right under the, the EGR valve, it was a, um, actually bypassing the copper washer on the bottom basically so we're gonna go ahead and replace that now this injector does pay quite a bit I think in the book it's like five or six hours but we're gonna be able to sneak it out real quick and easy doing it the sneaky way so just pull those two fuel lines off on the front two injectors just lift the rail up not the rail but lift the two lines up and you'll be able to get access in there it's pretty easy um, just so we can get it done in a timely manner for the customer but very easy to diagnose. I use my stethoscope. As soon as you start it, you would hear the ticking sound. Um, it was quite obvious. But stethoscope pinpointed it, and you can see there's soot around it too, so that's how we nailed it down. But overall, really easy job. Just make sure you get the, the right seals for it. There's just basically three seals. There's one for the return line, there's the copper washer, and then there's the o-ring that for the center of the injector, basically. Um, the most difficult part of this job was actually cleaning the the bore out. That took a very, very long time because it was so very dirty. And funny story about this truck is this is one of the trucks that I had to replace the CP4 on because the CP4 blew up. But I didn't do the injectors in it, thankfully. Um, if I did, this hopefully wouldn't be a problem. But this is one that we put an XG mirroring valve in when the customer first bought it because it has like 200,000 miles when he bought it which is kind of crazy to me but did all that um, then we thankfully put the valve in the pump blew up we were able to put a pump in it call it a day and it's every, it's been great since then up until this point but you know the injector was completely loose I could have probably unscrewed it by hand thankfully these ones are not torque yield bolts you can see how nasty that injector is there's nothing left on the bottom there's nothing damage on the injector, so we can just go ahead and wire wheel it up and throw it back in. See the bore, how nasty it is. But we'll get it all cleaned up, throw it back in, and go from there. I also have this really uh, nice kit that, I don't know who bought it. My, it's my dad's, but it works really good. It's like a, uh, has a screwdriver end. Uh, kind of, you got a little glimpse of it there. I'll post a link down below. This thing actually worked out really well. Um, it has a screwdriver handle, the extension. And it's that quarter inch quick attachment ends and you have the option between plastic brass or steel um, and all kinds of different sizes thing worked great it's pretty cheap on Amazon but definitely came in handy for doing this job if I didn't have this um, it would have been a nightmare and I'll post it down below also I'll post the injector seals too down below if you do have this problem with your truck just make sure when you put the injector back in you actually torque it the spec to tighten down the injector is 22 foot-pounds so make sure you follow that so it's nice and tight. The other thing that I forgot to mention is these seals are actually sold in the set of four. So what I did, obviously the customer paid for the set of four. So I just, I used the same bag. I just cut it open, took the seals I needed just for one injector, folded up, stapled it, gave it to the customer. <laughs>
Thankfully didn't have no issues putting it back together, went together pretty smooth, got it all done, it fired right up, didn't make no crazy noises, there's no more exhaust bypassing that seal, or not exhaust, but combustion pressure, everything sounds good, truck drove good, and just for reference, this truck does have quite a bit of miles on it, I believe it has two, around 240,000 on it, I'll show you at the end, unfortunately, obviously there's no audio, so I missed the whole part of it where it was running, I started test drive I didn't actually test drive filming it anymore I don't film and drive cars anymore it's too dangerous but everything went good and yeah so another one done and I'll see you on the next one thanks for watching please like and subscribe and if you have something to say comment down below thank you and have a great day